Welcome to another He Said, She Said. And first time tuning in, my name is Ronald Johnson. And what I do is I help high performers that are facing burnout. I'm a mindset and positive psychology practitioner. And I'm here to help you. And this is episode one, two, three, 15. And I'm here with Denise. And you better take it away and catch that home run. <laughs> I'm going to catch that. <laughs> And thank you so much, Ron. I'm Denise Lewis, and I have a company called Grand Slam Coaching. You can find me at www.grandslamcoaching.com, and I help people with performance, whether it be on or off the athletic field, whether it be the boardroom, the courtroom, or the classroom. I want to help you be the best you that you can be, and I'm so excited for episode 15. Yay, we love it, and today we have a really exciting topic, which is about giving back. Yes, and change comes within so if you want to have a change one thing point four but always three things pointing back baby so change starts with you exactly <laughs> the change does start with you and i've got the breakthrough without breaking you shirt on you can't really I, I love it. it i remember that in our last our last summit back in december we have another summit coming up very soon Excellent. so let's talk about that giving back and the reason i'm looking down i'm going to that feeling um what it looks like for me giving back is helping out people that are less fortunate than I am. When I think about giving back, I think about giving back to our future gener- generations. When I think about giving back, I think about living in my purpose because giving back and helping out people is one of my purpose in life is. Giving back is empowering people that don't know they have a lot of power. Like mm-hmm. most people don't think they have the resources, but they have all the resources they need, but they just don't know it. You know, empowering people, giving back to my biggest thing right now is giving back to our youth. Um, and I'll tell you why. First, my first charity was going to be about youth facing obesity and overweight because I was overweight. And my, my dad's idea of eating healthy was going to McDonald's, getting a chicken sandwich, taking one bun off, and that was it. Or doing that and drinking water, okay? Or he had one ideology, which is, well, so I said, Dad, I got to lose weight. I'm, I'm kind of overweight. What should I do? His idea was, well, son, you should big bone. Okay. Just deal with it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, we women here. Oh, you're just big boned. <laughs> I mean, that's just such a load of cop out. <laughs> We're not Neanderthals. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So that was going to be my first charity. Uh, but talking with uh, my co-host on Life to Shuffle, with Gloria, endless possibilities but we're kind of just hit the nail right on the head um at this point right now um after doing a lot of study with positive psychology kids face two neuroplasticities in their life so it's neuroplasticities in life one first is zero to six next one is 12 to 24 and either period of their life can be how they view life as an adult so if your dad or your mom says money doesn't grow on trees you're 30 years old Son, mine doesn't grow on trees. Or in my case, my dad says, only way to be successful in life, you got to work hard. You got to work 100 hours a week on to be success. Either paradigm at one point was true for them, but with more insight now, it's false. It's false paradigm. And useless paradigms do serve a small purpose for a short amount of period, which is mine doesn't grow on trees. That becomes a mindset. My mindset when I first started my first business was I had to work my ass off to achieve anything. Because my dad said the same thing. Again, false. So what do you think we think about um, giving back, Denise? What's on your, your list? Well, first, yes, giving back has always been a big thing for me. But first, I want to just, if I may interject a little bit, to say that your dad's mindset was false is not exactly correct. Because yes, yes you have to work hard to get your rewards. We've just changed and grown into what really is hard work. It used mm-hmm. to be in your dad's era, it was working 100 hours a week because mm-hmm. they, you know, back in the 50s and 60s, you worked six days a week yep. and you had Sundays off. Now we're working a lot smarter as in addition to working harder. Mm-hmm. So, the, so the big takeaway from your dad, from, from what your dad told you is, You just have to work hard. It's not going to be given to you. And yes, money doesn't grow on trees. So remember to be frugal. Yes. 
Sorry, had to had to interject that. No, and, and, and I love that because it, it gains more insight myself um, mm -hmm. and gains more also more healing too. Um, how I want to say that's false. What I should have said is that those ideas serve the purpose for him and for me. If I didn't work hard to quit my full time job, become my first and my first business, you and I would be talking nowadays. So I think everything in life. Yeah serves a purpose for that time bearing being, but over a period of time with realize is our thought processes and what we're doing really serving as our ultimate purpose, what we want to do. Yep. And, and it's good that those, that those standards and values keep being passed along from generation to generation and, and they just get adapted as each generation grows and changes and, you know, makes it better and more efficient for them. But mm -hmm. let's get back to our topic, which is giving back. And giving back can be on a wide range of scales because you're talking about starting a charity with Gloria. And for those of you who don't know Gloria and another woman, Amy and Ron and I, we, we have this group that the four of us brainstorm together once a week, which is freaking awesome. Um, we don't all have to be Bill Gates with billions of dollars in our foundation that we can just willy nilly give away. Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, give it, giving back starts at home. Okay. Mm -hmm. Giving back is, for example, um, we recently lost one of our students at um, my son's high school mm -hmm. and he committed suicide. And he was also a young man that we did Taekwondo with. Now, what I did was uh, the school organized uh, for two days, yesterday and the day before, uh, in the rally courts to go and sign condolence cards. And you could also have the opportunity to sign up for a meal train. So, for, mm -hmm. so I signed up for the meal train. I'm responsible to provide a dinner for them um, one day next week, which is my way of giving back. Um, I've also given back by running these various, uh, doing these virtual challenges, these virtual walks and virtual runs. As an example, I just completed you know, 500 miles for Sesame Street. Who doesn't love Sesame Street? I, I love the Cookie Monster. That's my favorite character. I know. Yeah. Well, Elmo, <laughs> Elmo was my son's favorite, but Big Bird, I got to say Big Bird is like, uh -huh. Big Bird's the bomb. So, um, you know, yes, that was $100, but I gave back to something that I derived a lot of enjoyment from when I was when I was young and my son derived uh, when he was young. And, and it's, a, it's a great learning tool. Um, teachers, for example, give back every day because they choose to be there to help mold our students. And one way that I can give back as a parent is that every fall when he was, when my son was in elementary school, they always had a list of here's supplies that we really need that we can't afford. Mm -hmm. So I would sign up and make sure that they had the napkins and the plates for all their little parties for the year, or I donate, you know, the sanitary wipes to the Kleenex or the chalk or whatever it was that they needed. Um, and everybody had a responsibility to do all that. Uh, giving back can also be uh, a monetary thing. It can be a time thing. Um, and just being there to help your help your child's classroom, um, you know, get it all together, help the teacher. Um, giving back is such a wide variety of opportunities. And it's just making sure that you're spreading your energy and your joy and your passion, even if it's only helping one person or a thousand, but start with one person. That's where it starts. Yep. That's where it starts. It you know, really starts with, <clears throat> if you want to give back, Denise said it and hit the nail right on the head. It starts with the heart. Mm -hmm. So if you're a kind of person, I'm going to give back because it's the right thing to do. I don't know if this really comes from the heart. It can and it can't. If it's, you know, because it's the right thing to do versus, oh my God, it is the right thing to do. This touched that, me. There, there's, a, there's a difference in the nuance of that sentence. Tonality of, of this. Oh man, I got to go to volunteer my son's football game today. I sure don't want to do it, but it's the right thing to do versus, oh man, you know what? Great kids coming out there. I love to see the kids, you know, little tots. You know, the tonality and energy mm -hmm. is when you think of that word can be the biggest difference. Absolutely. Is it an exciting tone or like, oh, not again, kind of tone. Like uh, growing up, we had a thing called PTA, parents, teachers, whatever, mm -hmm. where, where some of the, the teachers actually volunteer their time. So if you go on a field trip, you got so-and-so's mom 
coming on a field trip, they need a certain amount of adults. You know, if you had 20 kids, 30 kids going on a field trip, you need the teacher, maybe the teacher assistant, and one more parent. And you always had the one parent or dad that would volunteer and go. Absolutely. That's good. And, I, and I wanted to be that parent and I, I was <laughs> working to do it. And, and, and for the difference between when you were, I, when you and I were young, when we had a field trip, we had a school bus. Now it's even more important to volunteer for that because there's no more school buses and parents have to drive. So you know when, what? that was, sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I was saying when my son was young, I was like, oh my God, I want to go drive on this field trip because I really want to go to wherever it was and yeah. work always got in the way. But it's okay because other parents were there to give back and they always had so much fun, you know. That's the one thing again, I was kind of beyond baffled when I went when I moved to the Silicon Valley. So I grew up, you know, I'm just gonna go off topic just one second. A school bus was the way you got out of where you were. And what I would say by that is that if you lived in a poor community, you were able to go to better school. Like me, I lived in San Diego. I was able to go Pacific Beach Middle School, which is theoretically about maybe 30 minutes away. And then they pick up kids along the way, the bus is all there and bus is home. Nowadays, you have to go to school in your zip code, which I was like, wait a minute here. That poses a challenge. Yeah. What this school in my zip code is not rank 10 or rank whatever. I'm going to go to this school because they're better in science, they're better in football. I can go to that school. Then now comes the conundrum, say, okay, you want to go to better school? I need $2,000 a month for private school. Yep, or more. Or, or more, more, right? So that was beyond me. So that's my quick story about the bus because I think that was a way for kids to think already in their mind at a young age, hey, I don't like the opportunity here. Let me go somewhere else. Let me try. The, my bus is bus D. So I bus D to Pacific Beach Middle School and the Michigan Bay High School. I went to school away from where I lived at because I liked the school and my friends went there. So it was great. But yeah, anyways. Yeah. So that's, that's what my subject about the school bus. I miss school buses. They were cool. And it was a way for kiddos to actually interact with different things. Go to the zoo, uh, mm -hmm. go to amusement park, go to a museum. You know, and back then it was like 10 bucks. The parents donated, bring you a little paper sack for your lunch. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> that's how... That's how the schools gave back. But the guy, I think they abolished all the field trips now. If anything, it's all about, um, that's what comes down to all about scholastics. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to my parents the other day and we went to this whole idea of Zoom, right? And how it's going to be in the next couple of years, we don't know. But I was really shocked that we had to go to Zoom. We had to do all this stuff. But a lot of parents, a large percentage of them didn't have the facilities to facilitate this. I mean, facilities mean, did you have internet? Do you have yeah. more than one computer at home? Do you have yeah. an iPad? Some people didn't have iPads. So what happened is that people had to donate their old iPads or computers to the school so they can you know, tag and all that stuff and give it to that student that couldn't afford it. And that's another way of giving back. And, and, and it was like, wow. And what, but what's important there is that the parents who had more, they chose to give back. Yeah. So that their so that their children's peers could keep up. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge that's a huge difference whether you choose to give back, back to the attitude that we talked about before, or whether it's oh, okay, I'm kind of bullied yep. into it, you know, or pushed into it. And it feels so when when you're coming from a spot of joy it makes it so much more rewarding. Flow, baby, flow. Yeah, I love it. Exactly, flow. whoosh, whoosh to you, whoosh mm -hmm. to you, yes. And I was, you know, I was the recipient of people giving back to me last weekend, because for those who don't know, my dog Coco on our morning walk, she actually mm -hmm. accidentally ingested some methamphetamine and almost overdosed and died. And then my friend Ron and my friend Gloria and my friend Amy and a whole bunch of my other friends, I put out a thing saying, hey guys, I need some help. I can't afford this $1,800 vet bill. And my friends chose to give back to me as I have given to them and helped me out. And I'm so appreciative that my little network helped me as I have helped them in the past. So it does come back to you. And now Coco's on the mend, which is even better. But 
And that, that goes to one point. It's about having, when you go through a trauma situation, like, you know, Coco to me, when I heard read your story, is it's not just important to you. It's important to your son. Mm -hmm. It's important to the family. Yeah. So when I saw that, I'm like, oh my goodness, I got to give back because man, how would that feel? My, that was my dog. And I was stuck in a rock and hard place. Yeah. Oh, my sucks. So when you go through trauma, it's really important to have a great resilience. Think positive, try different ways of getting there, have support system of great friends give back. The only thing that kind of got my feet set on fire, I was shocked, bewildered, baffled, angry, frustrated, not with the fact that you put your post out there. I was upset because I never done a GoFundMe donation. I just never done it. I heard about it. You only hear about the big ones. Oh, this person received, you know, $100,000 for GoFundMe, or this person received a million dollars for the surgery. You'll know, hear about the big ones in the news, but I never did my research. So when I saw your post, I went in and I was just bewildered and baffled. You are in a need. Okay, here is a need that, hey, here's a family member that's hurt. You need this money to pay for their, their, their surgeries. Uh, not surgery, you need money to pay the doctor bill. So you had two situations. Those that did see your post was, hey, I'm a single parent. I have a kid. I want my family, so I'd sacrifice my rent or where money has set aside yeah. to now pay for this. Right. Now you're like, oh shit, I paid for this. Now I, I have my, 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 now I may not move my head for the next 30 days. Exactly. So I'm gonna get to the point. I was really taken back. The fact GoFundMe charged 12.5% 12 12 for just transaction. I was uh, shocked because here it is, people need have needs. Mm -hmm. So if I didn't know you and was able to reach out to you and was ready to give my money, I would have thought twice because I've been upset about the 12.5% interest. Mm -hmm. So my point is, is that here GoFundMe has a great thing to help people in need, great avenue, right? Send a link out, post on your, your social media, but those, because okay, give me an example, the money I would have given you, they would have charged me 25 bucks for transaction. That would have been it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's- And that's 25 it's bucks criminal. you've used. Yeah. <laughs> it's criminal. Yeah, it is criminal. So I'm happy that there's places like Venmo, which uh, are much better, <laughs> are much better, but <laughs> which take nothing. But but uh, yeah, it, it was it was a bit criminal and, and but it's okay. And you were, we're doing all right. And my, my, between you and Gloria and my other friends, um, I raised about, I got about $1,100 in gifts. Wow. Awesome which was really awesome. So almost there, I was hoping there might be some extra to donate to the veterinary clinic to help other people in need, but alas, there's not, and that's okay. I'm still very blessed with the, with the friends and support system that I have. So, which brings us back to our topic of giving back and giving back also builds your support system, which then hopefully spreads, love is an easy word to use, but not appropriate. It just, let, particularly in this pandemic, we all are so isolated and it's even more important than ever to give when you can and where you can, um, even if it's just a kind word or a card in the mail, to just let people know that you're there to help keep those support systems strong and, and keep them going so that when someone is in need, it's, it, it's not a it's not a, oh my God, I didn't know, or, or it's a, oh, well, you know, she'll be okay. No big deal. It's, it's no, we need to be here for each other now yes. more than ever. Yes. And you know what, when you give back, I, I close my eyes, think about that feeling. One thing I'm going to say before I, I talk about how to give back, when you give back, you feel overwhelming sense of joy because it came from the heart. And that's what I felt when I gave back to you. It was like, man, Oh, I felt so good. I was on cloud nine the whole day, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> so happy to hear that. Oh my God, you so made my day that day. Yeah, it was cloud nine. I was really happy. So, you know, and, and let's go back to this. We, when I first think about charities that donating, I always think about, oh, wow, well, got to be a, a multimillionaire. You know what? We can just start very small. So if you're a person that has kids, and no, most of us have newborns and we go out and buy a bunch of clothes and we're always stuck with a lot of clothes we don't need. We either one, we you know, throw it in a box somewhere to forget about it or, or they grow so fast we can't even get to the clothes. What about your local Salvation Army? What about your local- uh, Goodwill. Goodwill. 
or better yet, you know what, Facebook Marketplace, we can just do free and give it away because mm -hmm. that is a way of giving back because there's someone out there that's going to have a child. Having a child right now is probably super expensive. Mm -hmm. You hit with a huge bill after they're born. Now you got to get hit with a bill for diapers. You get hit with a bill for uh, clothes that you have to buy for your kiddo. What about giving back clothes you don't need? And there's also another organization that I've donated uh, when I cleaned out my closet, some of my clothes to, uh, is an organization called Stand. Okay, I never heard of that. A and D, and I know they're in California. They have a a spot in Concord, and no one knows where it is because the drop off point is actually a neutral point. And the, this is a shelter for women who are the victims of domestic violence that when they have to go in the middle of the night and they grab themselves and or their kids, man, they're off to the shelter. They've got nothing. They've got whatever they have on their back. And what I really like about Stand is that not only do they take these women and children in and feed them and give them shelter, they also, uh, one of the reasons why I donated some of my old suits is because these women need clothes either to go to an existing job or they need uh, an outfit to go on an interview to get a job to then get their own place to live, which then means school. These kids need clothes for school. You know, everybody needs stuff like this. So it's more than, so there are other places that you can go uh, and give stuff away. Don't just throw them in the trash. Yeah. Don't send them to, you know, ThreadUp is, ThreadUp is a great company that will resell your clothes. So, so for your fancy stuff, no problem, but you know, you, you don't you don't choose to wear your your two hundred dollar pair of jeans anymore. Well, okay, first of all, if you can afford a two hundred dollar pair of jeans, good for you. But there's lots of other places you can take them other than Goodwill, you know, or the mm -hmm. or the garbage. Garbage is not on a, on the on the rule book. You should always take it to Goodwill because, or if you go on any, any Facebook, there's probably homeless organization with churches that mm -hmm. you can just go drop off. Gently used pair of jeans, or you know, you know what I've done before. My thing is black jeans. I don't like faded black jeans. So mm -hmm. if I've gently used, I've washed once or twice, they faded. I don't like the color. That's me. I can get away with someone else that now they have a fresh pair of jeans on their bum, and mm -hmm. they can go for that job interview, or can just have fresh, clean pair of clothes. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember this when I years ago. Oh my goodness, oh a long time ago. I used to wear a size forty between thirty eight and forty two size clothing. Well, what happens is that as I lost all the weight, I went to competitions, my body stayed the same. I used to have my closet stacked of jeans, right? Yeah. And you take it down, like, wow, you know, I don't fit these anymore. I just took those jeans and donated it. When I quit Fry's Electronics, but the way I write a shirt and tie, first of all, I went to burn those darn shirts. I bought the first two. But you know what came to mind is that most of my, all my white shirts are dry clean, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about, man, wow, what if you had this person that just needs a white shirt? You know, we, we did start a new job. You don't get paid for three to four weeks, depending upon the pay period. Or the mail they going through the interviews, this could be a nightmare sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't need to write to my local Goodwill, all my trousers that I'm not yep. going to wear anymore, all my right. ties I'm not going to wear anymore, what? and gave it back. I was like, yes. The only thing that was funny, i never seen this in my life, okay? <laughs> so I went to donate. So I brought this camera online. This is not my Goodwill. And I went to go donate not the camera but it came with a free printer so you bought the camera get a free printer right i went to goodwill brand new printer never opened i didn't even bust the seal i got the printer like oh i don't need this printer and i put it in my closet for maybe two or three years i don't know never used yeah so i'm doing it the printer we don't want those enough printers wow but well okay but the good news is they had enough at that goodwill that doesn't mean that we couldn't have found you couldn't have found another place for it but you and I were talking about a month or so ago, maybe a little bit longer, about uh, you would change your logos on your t-shirt and you had all these t-shirts and what were you going to do with them and you were going to throw them out and I said, why don't you cut them up in the rags or donate them? Right. And you were going to, you found a place mm -hmm. that they send them and go to Africa? Is that right? No, no, no. It must be something no. else. So I was, this is my gym and right across from the Salvation Army. Right. And it's, it's so funny. Speaking of that, because of COVID, it's much more hard to get stuff donated now than ever before. Absolutely. So, so I, want to go, I, I want to go donate four to five times. Every time I go, it's closed. There's a long line. And mm -hmm. I just want to go to the gym and get out of there. So I don't want to spend my lot time waiting 30 minutes. So sit in my clothes. Actually, I found a massager that I never, ever use. 
it's also in my trunk to donate as well too. Mm -hmm. I said to myself one day, after you talk about donating the clothes, I will in my office, anything that I have not used in the last six months to one year, I was gonna throw it away. But I said to myself, I'm gonna donate it because to me, that's you energy in my in my office mm -hmm. that's present, not using it. Because what if you have a person that's linked to a new massager because they're sitting in the office looking, sitting in the computer looking at stuff all day long? Don't go and spend hundred bucks on Amazon. Here's a free one right here for Salvation Army or a person there that needs it and can buy themselves. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. that's that's the good thing. Yeah. So and, and you know, it's a shame you hear stories in the news lately that you know Goodwill is shutting down some branches, Salvation Army is shutting down some branches. But Ron, you brought up a really good point that there are churches. Uh, in your in your area that have uh, maybe homeless shelters. There's a new one uh, that's about a half a mile away from me with Trinity Church that they uh, built a uh, like 40 bed facility oh, wow. okay. for homeless people, and they have to they have to check in. They have to be there every night by I think nine o'clock. There's no drinking or alcohol. Uh, there's no alcohol, there's no drugs because it's in partnership with an AA program. Um, they could always use clothes. There, there's a, quite a few homeless men around Safeway. Some are very nice and pleasant. Some are not so pleasant, but there's, there's one poor fellow named Mikey who clearly either needs to be on medication or whatever. Um, and I've given him a couple bags directly of clothes. I, I, have never seen him wear the clothes I've given him. I don't know where they've gone. I've hoped they've gone to someone else, but oh, I see him walking around Walnut Creek all the time and it's just, it's sad. Right. And one of my, one of my colleagues always makes sure that she buys him food. Mm -hmm. So that's, so we got Salvation Army, Goodwill, mm -hmm. yep. Stands, Stand. local church. Yep. Fifth one would be, if you don't have any of those locally by your house, you can always go on Facebook and find Facebook uh, group you can join and see like a local Bellingham group. Um, I did that recently. I joined it and they were looking for these, you know, um, so there's a lot of homeless campments out here and all they do is they clean up one, they shift a mile down, then they clean up that one, they shift a mile south, they clean up that, it, 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 that's what happens. So these people get together and they really are nice and they need the, the, the bins, not uh, those like plastic bins you get from Home Depot, sturdy, mm -hmm. right? Right. I had like a hundred of them when I moved. Wow. I have a lot. I mean, it's probably more close to 130. I have a lot. Right. So I saw the place. I reached out. So I saw the post. I reached out to them and I said, look, you know, I put on my porch, come and get it. How much do you need? How many do you need? 20. Here you go. Have a nice day. And I gave it to them. So that's the, so you got five. If you want to give that, you don't have to be super rich. You don't have to, um, Find it hard because Goodwills, Salvation Armies are not abundant as they were when I was a kid. I mean, YMCA's are gone too. So all this stuff's happening, but Facebook, Instagram, and eBay. LinkedIn. eBay. eBay. Has a, a pair, um, one of my colleagues is about to become a grandmother and she's bought all sorts of new stuff for baby to be, baby to be born shortly, right? Mm -hmm. And she was telling one of the customers yesterday, oh, I bought this and I bought this and I bought this. And the woman looked at her and she said, Dora, why are you buying all this stuff new? Go to eBay, buy it used. Go to Facebook, get it, get it pre-loved, pre-owned, perfectly good shape, and oftentimes it's free or for a nominal cost. And I turned to Dora and I said, "This is your first grandchild, but you know what? I'm going to start a grandmother school. I'm going to start grandma school for you. One hundred one, grandma one hundred one. A lots of pictures. B don't spend all this money because yep. when the next grandchildren co grandchild comes along, and if you can't give what you gave to the first one you are so setting yourself up for failure <laughs> you know so so and there's there's lots of ways i know that um in walnut creek uh every october november they have a coat drive and it's and it's through our schools so if you have any coats so is my son out see i buy coats big enough that when kincaid outgrows them i get them and then when i get tired of them i donate them because i have a thing for coats i am the amelda markets huh. of coats oh. Okay. It's shameful how many jackets I have. And I live in a place where I don't really need one. So, but I make sure I give at least a dozen every year. And then of course the next year comes and people give me free stuff or I get stuff through, you know, from a new uniform from the giants or a uniform coat from Safeway or whatever, whatever, whatever. And they just keep multiplying. So that's to give it back, give back. Yeah. Well, I can't give back stuff with the logos on it, but I can give the other stuff. So, yeah. So I do call the herd. You, you know? got it. 
Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So I hope you guys listen to this and learn. There's a lot of ways you can give back. And it doesn't have to be financial. It can be clothes that you don't that are gently use. It can be old baby clothes. It can be time. It can be going down to your local, I don't think it's called picket slavery anymore, but big lots and, yeah, and get, your, yeah, big lot. yeah. get, get some crayons, donate to the school, uh, donate your time. Yep. That's what the key is. Donate and give back because if you give back, not only does it heal you, like it did for me when I gave back to Denise. Yeah, it healed me, but it gave me a lot of joy. Gave yeah, it gave, gave, gave us both joy and gave Coco joy. And Yeah, and, and that's what's about is creating that, that environment that allows you to give back support systems too as well. We can build those because we go through traumatic times. Denise had a great support system where she's able to get what she needs to help herself and Coco help the family. That's what we did. Yeah. And it doesn't cost anything. That's the beauty about it. It doesn't cost a lot of time, a lot of money. Yeah. So with that being said is Gloria and I, and I'm going to incorporate Denise because she has great ideas. Um, we're going to start a charity called Endless Possibilities for Youth. Youth is to me, is where my heart is. Um, I know how it was being used, overweight, low self-esteem, molested as a kid. So I want you guys to understand, we're gonna start a charity because I wanna give back, Lori and I. And I'm gonna say thanks for listening to our episode one, two, two three, two. Yay. five. Yeah, yes. my but when, we, but when we talk about your charity, if I can just on a side note, yes. Gloria is a teacher. She is a middle school teacher. So yes. she gets back every day, not just because she's a PE teacher, helping these kids get their self-esteem and exercise and keep them right. She's also a coach like us. And Ron and I are both parents. And I had a very amazing upbringing, very kind and very loving, but I still have things to give because I was taught to give. So we're going to keep doing what we're doing here on He Said, She Said. We hope you find a way to give back sometime in the next week. Please email us um, at www.grandslamcoaching.com and at RJ Level Up Coaching. No, it's Ron at ronbusinesscoaching.com. Ron at ronbusinesscoaching.com. We would love to hear how you've given back uh, recently, let's just say since January, uh, because we'd like to share your stories. And um, yes, this is our 15th episode of He Said, She Said. So we look forward to next time. I do. And this is again, Ronald Johnson, the behavior mindset and positive psychology practitioner. And thank you for listening. And I'm going to hit one last foul ball. Hopefully you can catch it. <laughs> yep. I caught it because I'm Denise Lewis at grandslamcoaching.com, a performance-based coach to help you be the best person that you can be. And the Giants are in town today. So I'm going to boogie off to work, my friend. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye. Thanks, guys.